Hey all, Dalsar here. Uh, I am uh, in the midst of doing an overhaul of my Nook Color. Um, I am going to try out the recent re recently released uh, Ice Cream Sandwich Alpha, uh, and I am going to set it up in a dual boot with the latest um, Barnes & Noble stock firmware. Um, and uh, I'll be using my dual boot guide to do that. I'm, I'm not starting from a dual boot. Uh, actually, right now what I have is uh, CyanEngine Mod 7.1 uh, as my only operating system on the Nook Color. Um, and I do have Clockwork Mod Recovery installed internally. But uh, in order to do this, I'm going to need to return the Nook to stock, uh, install the uh, stock software 1.3, and then use Barnes & Noble's upgrade file to upgrade it to 1.4. So I'm going to need a Clockwork Mod uh, SD card because I'm going to end up deleting uh, Clockwork Mod from the internal recovery. Uh, so I have a 2 gigabyte SD card here uh, and my uh, handy SD card reader. So I have all my resources gathered, the uh, SD card is plugged in, uh, and I have all the files together that I'll need, the Clockwork Mod image, and uh, all the zips that I'll be flashing from Clockwork Mod once I get it going. Uh, and I have opened up WinImage, which is uh, it's the program I use just because it was the first one I got my hands on that worked. Um, you can also use Win32 Disk Imager, which is open source. Uh, WinImage is shareware. And I need to close these Explorer windows, otherwise they will interfere. And in WinImage, you go to the Disk menu, and the option is Restore Virtual Hard Disk Image on Physical Drive. Uh, Sandisk credit card, that is my card reader. And you, uh, in WinImage, it always defaults to this virtual hard disk, so you always have to go down to all files. And there's the image that I want. Double click on that, it's warning me that everything on the disk will be erased, that's fine. And it's in progress. And in the meantime, my uh, Nook Color is charging its best if you're going to be flashing a new ROM that you have 100% uh, charge. Uh, just to make sure that your battery stats don't get corrupted and you know your Nook doesn't stop charging when it's really only at 50%, that sort of thing. Um, and I went ahead and made a Nandroid backup via Clockwork Recovery and uh, the clockwork recovery that I already have on the uh, internal memory. And I made a titanium backup, because what I'm actually going to be doing is uh, installing a new launcher and selectively reinstalling the hundreds of apps that I currently have <laughs> on my uh, Nook Color. Okay, I have everything loaded on the SD card and I have the uh, SD card loaded in the Nook and powered on into Clockwork Mod Recovery. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is wipe everything through mounts and storage. Format system. Format data and format cache. And back up. Now I'm going to go down to install zip from SD card, not apply update. Choose zip from SD card. And right now, I just want to flash back to stock. Uh, that's going to be the update NC stock 1.3 zip.
All right, so I'm in stock and re-registered, and uh, I have gone ahead and plugged the uh, Nook Color into my PC, and I am grabbing the uh, the 1.4 update to drop into the root directory of the NC. Here we are. It's like it's 141. I might have said earlier in the video it was 143. <laughs> it's 200 megabytes, about twice as big as uh, typical custom ROM. And I'm going to eject the Nook Color, safely remove the Nook Color from my PC. And then I believe just uh, let it go to sleep and see what happens. And that did not take long at all. That was, uh, <laughs> uh, I would say, less than, may have, probably less than three minutes um, that it uh, it went to sleep and immediately started installing the update. Uh, you can see the little green hand down in the corner there, indicating that the update was a success. Just wanted to cover any uh, identifying information, but uh, you can see the software is now 1.4.1. All right, the stock install was a success, and I am back in Clockwork Mod. Time to install a few more zips. Same thing as before, install zip from SD card, choose zip from SD card, and the next one we need to run is Prep Dual Boot. And this one can take a while. And it says on the screen, this will take a while. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause. And that actually went really quick. I, I, the very first time I did that, it took probably 20 minutes. Um, but ever since then, running running remove dual boot, running prep dual boot, uh, goes pretty quickly. Which makes me wonder <laughs> whether it was actually removed or... Uh, um, what, what's going on there to, to uh, make it go so much more quickly now. But at any rate, um, the uh, next step in the process is uh, Froyo to dual boot, which obviously this is not Froyo. Uh, um, that file was made uh, back when the, uh, the file in use was called Eclair to dual boot. Um, when the uh, main custom ROM for the Nook Color was still uh, Nookie Froyo before CM7 had really taken off. Okay, that's done, and I am going to be a little more thorough with the wiping before I install uh, CM9, actually, before I install uh, Ice Cream Sandwich because uh, some people have reported instability uh, if they didn't go back and wipe uh, system data and cache again just like we did before uh, but also then go into the advanced menu and then wipe the Dalvik cache as well uh, so I am going to do all of the above to be on the safe side Now I uh, again went to uh, install zip from SD card, choose zip from SD card, and I'm going to update to CM9 uh, Encore EMMC sneak peek full of bugs. And here we have ice cream sandwich starting up. And here is ice cream sandwich. And I uh, actually already installed a launcher, ADW Launcher X, um, which uh, without being configured, um, I, I, I actually don't like as much as uh, what it looked like when I first installed uh, CM9. Um, mainly because of this kind of useless uh, bar across the top, which is just housing the menu button 
which is also on the bottom so it's just uh, kind of pointless <laughs> having that up there it's not it's not the notification bar notifications go down here uh, those are pretty cool the way those uh, pop up they don't uh, take up all the space they used to and I did uh, double check and I am able to boot into stock on the secondary partition um, but uh, one issue I would seen a couple of people report in my dual boot thread over on xdadevelopers.com uh, with the new uh, stock firmware 1.4 whenever you try to download from Barnes & Noble's app market it tells you you're not able to download that uh, you know that you may have you may not have enough space which obviously there's enough space so I don't know uh, what the issue is there um, but uh, the new update is not playing nice with the dual boot uh, what I'm thinking about doing is uh, seeing if I can't get uh, CM9 over to the secondary partition and uh, have that there as my little experimental build which I I, I, I bet I would uh, check out a lot more often than I than I ever did uh, Barnes & Noble stock um, and then I can put CM7 um, which is you know definitely more complete and robust and mature um, an operating system I can put that on my primary partition. So I'm thinking that's uh, most likely what I'm going to do. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully it uh, helped somebody out and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.